Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be our final video on the soundboard series that I've been doing. And we're finally going to tackle how to hook this up. If you have a smaller one than this, everything I'm going to say in this video is still relevant to you. Most of you, if you bought one of the soundboards that I recommended in my previous videos, then you'll be very ready to go. If you're confused at all about anything I'm saying in this video, check out the previous videos to this one just to see if maybe I covered your question in one of those videos. I'm going to be showing you how to hook this up uh, to your computer. We're going to go over this in three main sections. So connecting stuff to the board, then how you want to connect the board to your computer, and how you're going to set it up in Windows and how you're going to set up OBS. So those are our three main sections. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to cover is some really basic information. It's just two things that you should all understand going into this. First of all, inputs and outputs. I'm gonna be using these terms a lot, in and out. And so the thing that you need to understand is an input and an output is always in relationship to the device that I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about the soundboard and I'd say input, I mean plugging something into one of these channels through one of the connectors, whether it's your microphone or sound cards for mixing. If I say output, I'm talking about coming out of this board. Um, if I'm talking about the board, if I'm talking about your computer and I say output, I'm talking about sound card or the device or monitor, whatever, wherever the sound is coming out of your computer from. And then that goes, that out gets plugged into the inputs on this board. And this, the output from this board is going to get plugged into your computer. So just so that there's no confusion when I'm talking about outputs and inputs, they're always going to be in relationship to the device I'm talking about. Hopefully there's not any confusion. If you guys have questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to answer you. The second thing we need to talk about is converters, audio converters, audio converters, audio converters, audio converters, cables, converters, cables, converters. If it's an analog audio source, it can be converted. It doesn't matter what kind of jack it is. If you've got that little headphone style jack we're all familiar with, or you've got RCA, it can be converted. These little RCA jacks can be converted into quarter inch. Analog audio can always be converted. It's a little bit different with microphones as they need preamps and all of that stuff. But as far as we're talking about, if you want to plug in a sound card, let's say your motherboard has a headphone jack or your computer case on the front has a headphone jack or your monitor has a headphone jack and you want to plug that headphone jack into the soundboard for mixing. That can be done. You just have to follow the instructions in this video and take my advice and you'll be able to figure it out. It doesn't matter what cables you're using. They just have to be converted properly. You can buy any brand. You can buy any kind of converter as long as it plugs in and it's the proper jack, you're going to get a signal. And you just have to keep in mind the stereo signal, whether it's left or right. Usually this is labeled with colors. Red is always right, and it's either white or black for the left. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the basics are out of the way. Let's talk about connecting the board. So I had to switch my camera setup here a little bit. So I'm using kind of a worse camera for me and the better camera for the board, because I want you all to be able to see the soundboard very clearly. So you have a new soundboard. What's the first thing you should do? Well, Usually the board comes zeroed, which means all the knobs and the faders and everything are not like this and all over the place. They're at their zero position. But what I suggest everybody does is maybe you bought a used board. Maybe this is uh, maybe it's been out of the box and somebody's played with it, whatever it is. We want to zero the board first. So looking at this, these knobs here, you can see the gain knob here on channel one is turned up. So we want to turn that all the way to zero and just do that for every single one of these knobs and just twist them, make sure they're all at the 
zero position, which is actually labeled as negative 10 here, but basically off. And then the same thing with these buttons. You want to make sure all these buttons are popped up, are not engaged. So if you find one that it is engaged, even these ones here that say line, level, this button, make sure that is popped up as well. We don't want any of these buttons engaged. The next thing you want to do is take the compression knob, this blue knob here, that's only on the mic channels, and also zero that. Make sure that is all the way off. And then you've got these EQ knobs here on every single channel, and just zero those as well. And by zero, if you look very carefully, um, there is a tiny little zero at the top of the channel in the center. So zero for the EQ is actually straight up. So zero is either going to be straight up or it's going to be all the way to the left typically. So if we keep coming down the board here and you want to do this across the whole whole board. So you want to see find any knobs that need to be at zero and are not at zero. Compression, anything, you can kind of eyeball it. You want to get them all at zero so that you're not you don't plug something in and you're like, why does that sound so bad? Maybe it's the knobs are not in the right position because a little bit on these knobs does a lot. It has a pretty massive impact on the audio. So go through and make sure all the red knobs need to be to the left all the way off, um, including any red knobs you have on this side of the board over here. And we'll talk about those uh, later. These the FX knob is this orange knob. It may be a different color for you. It may be a gray knob, whatever it is. Um, and then there's these little buttons sometimes on your board to say pre next to one of the aux sends. Make sure those are also not engaged. They're popped up. And the pan should be dead center, straight up. And then there's a mute button um, down on this end. There's a bunch of buttons and there's buttons to say mute. And you want to unmute all of those disengage that and the last step is the same thing with these buttons down here make sure none of them are engaged yet so you want to be able to make mixing decisions as you go this is the way you're going to do it and then you can take all the faders and slide them down to the bottom and then check here above if you have a sub channel there's buttons that say left right one and two just make sure those aren't engaged and uh, all the knobs up here you can have the fx can be all the way off. Um, so the only button we want to make sure is engaged right now is next to this phone's control room knob. This is gonna be your headphone volume control coming out of this phone's jack up here. So this is where you would plug your headphones in. Uh, and the only button we want to engage is this main mix button. Um, you do not want to engage the two-track USB for the Behringer boards. Um, this will kill the audio out of the board, so you won't be able to mix to OBS. You'll be able to hear audio from your computer on a sound card, um, but it's basically useless because when you don't have this button pushed, you can't hear that audio, and it doesn't end up in the final mix anyway. It's basically a useless feature. Um, it's not for streaming, basically. Uh, it, it's for maybe a m music production, if you want to be able to monitor um, audio from software without the board interrupting anything. There's also a button over here, another red button called Two Track USB to Main. You also want to make sure that is not engaged. And these solo buttons also, these solo buttons need to be popped up as well. So just make sure everything is kind of popped up uh, all the buttons and everything is zeroed. And then we can start. At first, this is gonna look very overwhelming, for sure. I understand that. But all we're going to do today is, you know, I'm not gonna walk you through too much with the microphones. You plug a microphone in and it works. If your microphone is a condenser microphone, which I don't recommend for streaming, but if you do have a condenser microphone, there are the power switch and there's, another, there's two switches on the back here and one is power and one is phantom power. You can just have phantom power on at all times and you can turn the board on and off back here. Or you can plug the board into a power strip and power off the power strip. That's definitely something I recommend. 
On the back here, we have a bunch of analog outputs and our USB output is back here as well. So you may want to start first by plugging in a USB cable here and your power cable here and turning the power on. Do not plug the USB into your computer yet. We'll do that later um, when we're ready to set that all up. M mostly these would be set hooked up. Control room out would be to send um, this knob, this knob here, the volume. Um, this is actually a mini mixer, so you can select whether or not the sub mix, the main mix, or both are being sent to the control room. And then you can send that audio to like a headphone amp um, and have multiple headphones plugged into that. If you have many people like a podcast or something, you can do that. Um, you've got sub out, which would be, and, and main out, which those are analog outputs that would match up to these. So this will send volume to the sub out back there. And this will send volume to the main mix out there on the back. And you can also route those secondarily to the control room out, which comes out of this headphone jack as well. Okay, that's our quick overview on the board. If you've plugged your microphone in and you're just looking for like really quick, easy settings to make your mic sound good, take the compression knob and put it about, I don't know, three o'clock. Uh, that is going to sound really good for speech, for vocal speech on a stream. It's going to make sure that if you speak a little bit quietly away from the mic, you're lifted up, the volume is better. You're going to want to roll off the highs just a touch. So if you feel that the, the EQ knobs have like this notch that they fit in, they kind of like want to be on, on the zero, just take it out of the notch a little bit, roll it off a little bit, and then just do the exact same thing with the low knob here just take it out just take it out roll off the highs and the lows um, you can go more extreme depending on your mic the thing is you want to listen to it through your headphones so you can hear how you sound um, if, if you've got a lot of like room noise that's usually in the mids like a white noise going on in your mic so you can roll the mids until you kind of find a sweet spot for that if your mic is really hissy and picking it up and you've got a frequency control for the mid, you can sweep to find, you can go extreme, find, uh, try to find the frequency that is that hissy sound and, you know, roll it out. Don't just remember, this is going to change how you sound too. So don't be too extreme. If you're streaming a game, the white noise is going to get covered up by the game sound or music or whatever else you're streaming anyway. So if, you know, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You, you may want to do it last, like as a final in context setting after you've got like music and stuff, your typical stream audio, because you may not even hear that white noise um, once everything else is running through the board. So, and then the last thing we want to do is down here, let's see if we can get this, down here on the channel strip, you've got these, these buttons. So you've got this top button that says mute, you know, that's to mute the mic real quickly. Um, and you've got solo sub and main. Um, the solo button allows you to quickly check a single source in your headphones, um, in, in your mix. So um, maybe you just want to hear just your mic for a second. You hit the solo button. It solos that channel and mutes everything else on the board, basically. Um, that, that's just usually for troubleshooting. You're almost never going to use it. Um, these two buttons, if you have a sub mix and a main mix, you'll have buttons to select what channels go to the sub and the main in the main mix. So you can have two different mixes going on. You can have um, some channels going to the sub mix and the main mix. You can do them both at the same time. Uh, let's for instance, I the way I use this is I use my sub output as a um, secondary send to speakers, right? So um, I don't want my microphone sent to the speakers because if I do that, they'll feed back in the room and that, it'll make a, that microphone whoosh feedback sound. You don't want that uh, on speakers. So I don't send my mic to the speakers, but maybe I do send this channel because it's music and this channel because whatever, right? Um, so the thing you want to do for sure is if you want it to go to the stream, if you're planning on using the soundboard for your stream and you're sending it to OBS, the main button needs to be pushed down. So I know I'm going to have this microphone sent to main, so I'm going to push the main down. And I know I'm going to have all the stereo channels 
Um, so if you notice here at the bottom, you've got numbers. So this is channel one, and down on this end, it's going to be harder to see. Um, these have two numbers, 13, 14. So you've got 9, 10. Um, so we've got 9, 10, 11, 12, um, 13, 14, 15, 16 on this board. So this, these are indicators of whether the channel that's going into the board is mono or stereo. And since these are two channels, 9, 10, you'll also notice at the top of the board here, it says left L and R for left and right. So the input for line in 9 and 10, it doesn't have an XLR input. So all the XLR channels over here are all mono. Um, they're going to be wherever you pan them, right? So you could plug in a sound card that has left and right into two channels. Let's say 6, uh, six and 7 could be a stereo channel if you wanted to add and not use a microphone. You could take the pan knobs for 6 and six and seven and pan, pan them hard pan them left and right and then you'd have another stereo input up in here you'd sacrifice the xlr port but most of you are only going to be using one microphone anyway so if you have a big board like this you can get extra stereo channels by hard panning them and plugging devices in okay don't forget to send it to the main push the button for main main so uh, I suggest just pushing the main button for every channel and then pulling them out if it's something that you want to do. Okay, so now we've got our board set up pretty well. Um, we're almost ready to go. So let's talk about plugging a sound card in. This is kind of where you get freedom to choose. So in my previous video, I told you guys about the Ugreen sound cards that have the RCA jacks on them. The reason I like those is you can go RCA out of, RCA out of that you can go RCA directly out of those Ugreen sound cards that I linked. And um, I'll, I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to see all the little accessories that I recommend. And all you need is an RCA cable and some RCA to quarter inch jacks. And then you just plug these into your board. And I linked that as well in that video. You can buy a pack of, I don't know, eight of these or something. I would buy two packs because these break very easily. Um, I've never found a brand that doesn't just come apart eventually when you're trying to pull them out of the jack. They do kind of snap back together. They're not like forever broken, but it can be kind of annoying. So I wouldn't like spend extra money on these. I would buy just eight pack of the cheap ones, buy two packs of the cheap ones, and then just match up your colors. If you've got a um, red and white cable, red is right and white. And then you want to plug this into your sound card, except there's one thing missing. You need a ground loop isolator. So we've got two kinds of ground loop isolators and they will both work, right? This one has the headphone style jack, that eighth inch audio jack that we're all familiar with. And this one is an RCA to RCA. It's got RCA female to RCA male. And you're going to want to use a ground loop isolator on everything that you plug into the soundboard. So if you're going to use RCA to RCA, like I suggest with the Ugreen sound cards, you're going to want to connect the ground loop isolator just anywhere in between the sound card and the soundboard. The ground loop isolator can be plugged in in any direction. It can be plugged directly into the board, into these adapters, and then you can go from there. Just make sure red goes into red, and white and black are the same in this instance. So you got just connect your cables up so that red is in the red and the other the other color is in the other color. Then plug the other end into your sound card. Now you may not have a U green sound card like I suggested. Maybe you're just using um, a regular old your motherboard on your computer. Maybe you're using your monitor. Your monitor has a headphone jack and you want to use that as your main audio from your computer. That's where you'd want to get one of these RCA to headphone adapter cables. And same concept applies. Plug this into the ground loop isolator. Plug this into your monitor, motherboard. If you have an old tablet or cell phone, whatever you want to do. 
it's kind of important to maybe plan ahead and figure out what do you want to mix on your stream? What do you want to have running into your soundboard here? Um, and do these one at a time. So if you have some planning ahead, you can be like, okay, I know I want 9 and 10 to be my main Windows audio. That's going to get plugged into my motherboard. I want 11 and 12 to be my Discord talk channel. So plan ahead. Figure out, I want 13, 14 to be my alerts. I want 15, 16 to be my music. If you, can, if you know what you're going to use each channel for, as you go, it's going to be much easier to label your sound cards in Windows and plug everything in one at a time. So my suggestion is to figure that all out, get your adapters and cables all ready, plug those all in, and don't plug them into the computer yet. Just get it all situated. Maybe take some tape um, or a label maker and label each one, each channel, its intended use. The last thing you want to do is you're going to want to set the main mix and your microphone volume um, to Unity. Unity is this little zero you see right here. And so you want to get this white line so that it lines up with the zero and sounds good um, in your headphones. So also plug headphones in. And the last step is to turn up the gain on your microphone until it sounds good, until it's not distorting and you have a good amount of volume going on in your headphones. So you take this gain knob and you turn it up. Now typically for an SM58, SM57, on most of the Behringer soundboards, they're going to sound best somewhere in between 12 and 3 o'clock. Just dial it in for you. Each board is different. Analog circuitry is not consistent. These aren't digital, so some are going to sound a little warmer, a little hotter. Um, the power delivery is going to be a little bit different between board to board. Even the same exact board uh, model number can be different from board to board. So that said, leave your microphone at Unity forever. You only want to change the volume of your microphone using the gain knob. That This is where you adjust your volume for your microphone. This is going to change the volume for discord for the stream for everything basically you want this to be at unity you can quickly turn it down for the stream if you need to turn your mic down for some reason but you want your microphone while you're streaming at your normal loudest volume to just live at unity you're not going to be adjusting the microphone as much as you're going to be adjusting let's say alerts music game sound this is where you do the real mixing and that's because you're not really mixing your voice. Your voice, you shouldn't be trying to boost your voice above the music. You should be trying to get your voice at a steady, nice output level for the stream that's consistent and turning your music down and up accordingly. And you'll be able to hear all that in your headphones. You'll be able to hear the relationship of your microphone to all the things you're trying to mix. You'll be able to hear exactly what the stream hears, which is really vitally important in my opinion. So. Plug your devices in, plug your cables in, get ready. Now, if you only have two channels on your board, let's say you, there's a couple of Behringer boards that only have two stereo inputs, um, there is a non-fader stereo return channel on most soundboards. So you can see here, we've got a left and a right, and it says RET1, return one. Uh, and then on this side of the board, we've got stereo aux returns. This is the volume for this RET1 over here. So this is return one, uh, return two. And th this knob sends it um, to the aux send, which would be in your Discord return channel. You're not gonna wanna touch those unless for some reason you want to send your computer audio or whatever you're plugging in here. But you can plug in another sound card here and you can even use that multi-channel mixer that I told you guys about in the last video and plug in four additional stereo inputs. Now you're not gonna have EQ on this um, and you're not gonna be able to do, you can send it, but you can't do the effects and you can't do the balance and all of that stuff. It's not gonna be on a fader, but it will be on this knob. Uh, you know, So basically, ideally, this is a way for you to plug in more sound cards with a little bit less features. But if you bought one of those very small Behringer boards, the, the cheapest one I recommend in my recommended boards video, 
that's basically all the functionality of all the stereo channels over there anyway. Um, you're not going to get a bunch of other features um, that you're not going to get the EQ uh, basically is, is the main thing that you're missing on that board for any of the stereo channels. So there's no harm in expanding this way if you need more. I have one on my board. I have every stereo channel on my board populated. One is in reserve. It's not always used, but I've got it ready to go to plug something in like a tablet. So you can kind of be prepared. So that's our over, overview of the board's inputs, putting things into the board. And you're going to have to think about what you're going to plug in from your computer and you're going to have to have sound cards ready for each one. This motherboard, monitor one, monitor two, or you can buy those U green cards and do U green one, U green two, U green three, U green four. Um, and you'll be good to go. So the last thing we need to talk about is getting audio. You want to send your microphone to your computer. Um, alone right because when this main mix is going to come out of the usb uh if you send that to discord people are going to hear themselves if you have them routed through the board you don't want that you don't want people hearing themselves or hearing your computer's music or whatever you're listening to um through the soundboard so we need to route the microphone out the aux send so these this this red knob here corresponds with either a fader on your board that says mon um or a knob that says one to aux send. So this board says aux, um, and it's got it says mon here, and it says one, two, and then three. These are the these are the send, the master send volumes. FX is the third send, and then we've got physical outputs that correspond with that. Um, so aux send one, aux send two, and then aux send three. So depending on what board you have, you're going to have outputs here that say one, two, typically at least one, two, and then the FX send, maybe it may not be two jacks like this. And your stereo aux returns, you're going to have one, two, and three, and make sure you keep in mind left and right. Okay. So you've got mono is left. Uh, and then if you plug in left and right, you'll get a stereo signal from that. And just remember, you just need whatever cables will let you adapt from whatever device you're using to plug into here. That's why I suggest buying a bunch of these adapters because you're going to end up with you know, whatever you want to plug in, you'll be able to plug in. So how do we get the microphone from the aux output here? Well, you need to use an input on your computer. Those U green cards have a mic input that you can use. So you need to come out of this jack um, and you're going to want to use one of those mono to stereo adapters I linked in the last video. Um, that will let you plug in to the board and then have an RCA either male or female coming out and then you can send uh, the mono signal from here across both channels will adapt to the input it's usually a headphone jack you can use your motherboards line in or mic in um, and send this signal out there and then when you turn this little red knob on channel one that'll send it out of this port to your microphone input on your motherboard or the Ugreen sound card and you just have to get the window settings correct in order for this to all function right. So now we're going to move on to the Windows side. We're going to move on from the soundboard. Hopefully you understand. You're going to plug sound cards in. You're going to plug things into sound cards. Um, at this point, go ahead and plug in the USB port. Make sure you have power on the soundboard and plug in the USB port to your computer. So you've plugged in your soundboard to the computer and your default sound cards have all switched over automatically your computer's picked up the soundboard this is not really ideal so we're going to have to switch things back um, every time you plug in a sound card it's going to switch to the d new default device and everything's going to be messed up so let me show you guys how to deal with that kind of situation first thing you want to do is go to your system tray by the clock you should see a speaker icon if not it could be in this little arrow um, so click on the arrow and look in the box, but if you find the speaker icon, you can right click and you go to sounds. Then you're going to get this sounds window and you're going to want to click on the playback tab and you're going to want to look for the new device that's been plugged in. Um, that is your soundboard and it should say something like 
um, USB advanced audio device or USB audio codec, um, you're just going to want to right click on it and disable it. So it'll be enabled like this and you're going to hit disable. Um, it'll be the default device, which means it'll have this little um, green checkbox on it when you go there. And same thing with the recording tab. You're going to want to find the new default device and um, you don't want to disable it. So, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on it um, wherever it is. It's not going to have this uh, icon. It's probably going to have a microphone icon, but the principles are the same here. You're going to click properties and you're going to go to the advanced tab and you're going to set it to the highest possible quality um, that is 48,000. All inputs on your computer, microphone inputs, line inputs for broadcasting and recording, um, at the highest you're going to want 48,000. If you're streaming and you're using OBS, you're going to want 48. So 24-bit or 16-bit, whatever is the highest you can select that is 48,000 hertz. Um, and then you're going to want to uncheck the box for exclusive mode and disable any audio enhancements. And then you're going to want to go over to the levels tab and you're going to want to set this to around 60 to 69, 75. Um, this is going to kind of depend on your soundboard. Lower is better. You never want it at 100. There's going to be a ton of white noise. Um, there's, there's going to be a noise floor you're going to raise up. So you want to have this quieter. 50 between 50 is actually pretty safe. Um, 69 is generally good. So 69 is a safe bet to start. You can raise this if you feel like it's too quiet um, later, or you can lower it if you feel like things are distorting or too loud. But basically what we're going to do is boost it even further for broadcasting through OBS with filters. And then you're going to want to go to the general tab and name it. You're going to want to name every single card on your computer that you plug in and that you're using. And it will tell you how, what kind of device it is, if it's USB, if it's an actual jack, however you're getting your soundboard into your computer. I'm using the physical analog outputs from my soundboard to go into the computer because I have a stream computer that uses the USB jack. So I can't show you the USB jack, but it will just say whatever it says. Um, and you can tell that it's working because if you look at, if you tap on your microphone um, or you talk, you'll see that little green uh, input signal it means the, the card is getting input. So if you see a little signal from your mic, that means you're good. And you don't really want this to be loud. That actually is going to be significantly loud enough for Discord or for streaming or whatever it is. Like I said, we're going to boost it later. Um, my mic, my actual mic going into Discord is coming through a second sound card out of that jack that we talked about, the, the, the send, the aux send. And if I turn my mic up on the soundboard, turn that aux send, you can actually see how loud that signal is for Discord. It's much louder. Um, so that's a separate sound card. That's one of those Ugreen sound cards that I recommend. But you can use the line in on your motherboard. You can use whatever. Just do not put the volume, the level, at 100. You want to have it around 69, 60, 75. Those are good numbers, uh, typically. It really depends. If you do a recording in OBS, you'll be able to listen back and be like, wow, there's a bunch of white noise. That's not good. Turn this down. If there's white noise, turn this down. This is where most of the white noise comes from, is, is from this input side. Okay, so you've got your first sound card. Um, we're going to live in these, this setting window for a while, right? Basically, what you can do is you really only want the outputs that you're ever going to use or the inputs you're ever going to use. Disable everything else that you're not ever going to use um, on your computer. So I know I'm going to use the Discord Ugreen. And I know I'm going to use the soundboard in. You want to make sure your Discord input volume and your Discord um, card is set to the default device. You can right click on it. And if it's not the default device, it'll say set as default and default communication. You want the, your, your Discord voice chat that you've plugged in separately to be the default device and the default communication device so that programs will look at that as your voice communication device only. 
we're going to set up OBS manually to see the soundboard as its as its main input. So you don't it don't need to set it as a default device here. So basically, you're going to want to plug in each sound card now to your computer, and every time you plug in one of those new a headphone jack, or if it's a USB device, it'll see it as a brand new device and it will set it as the default device. So we're not going to worry about default communication and default device settings until the end. We're going to live in the playback tab now that we've got our inputs set, right? We've got our soundboard in there. We've got the audio bit rate set. Um, we've got our discord sound card set up. Basically you want to plug in so take one of the cables from one of the stereo channels and plug it in. If it's in your motherboard or one of these Ugreen cards, plug it into the Ugreen card and plug the Ugreen card in. The Ugreen card will then show up on your computer as a USB device in here. It will also go and show up as the new default device in recording. Just if you're not using that Ugreen card as your Discord, if it's not being used as an input and it's only being used as an output, disable it. Just come in here and hit disable and move back to the playbook playback tab right click go into properties and name it name it whatever it's going to be used for um, if this is your um, ugreen main windows out then name it that um, in you want to go into the enhancements tab and click disable all enhancements you want to go into levels and you want to make this make sure it's at 100. You're never going to adjust the volume through Windows. You're always going to adjust the volume through the soundboard. You want to send 100% of the volume to the soundboard and mix using the faders on the soundboard itself. You can go to the advanced tab and for the output side, because it's going into the soundboard, you can now set this to the highest quality that Windows allows. This doesn't have to be 48, it can actually be 96. You can send incredibly high quality audio from your sound card out analog into the soundboard and then that's going to get converted back to 48 before it hits OBS. So you can get higher quality audio sent to your soundboard, which is really nice for mixing. Um, and you're going to want to uncheck allow applications to take exclusive control of this device and that's it. Make sure you name it, make sure the level's at 100. This is for the output, not, not the input. All outputs can be 100. Inputs need to be adjusted according to white noise level, and uh, you can kind of balance that through filters and OBS. We'll talk about that. That's it. You're going to want to do that with each card. You're going to plug in a stereo channel. If it's plugging into the monitor, you're going to find it. If you want to see if, the, if it works, you can right-click and hit Test. And if you hear it on the soundboard, in your headphones and you can adjust the volume on that channel you're good to go plug if you've got a uh, a tv in your setup and the tv has a headphone jack or rca jacks even you can plug that into your soundboard if you've got that hdmi audio extracting matrix i suggested in the last video you can use the headphone jacks on that i have that hooked up for this monitor here i'm using the matrix to send different sources to this monitor, I'm using the headphone jack on the matrix. And so when I send audio to this monitor, you can actually hear it coming through the matrix because that's the matrix is plugged into the soundboard. Motherboard output, if you want to plug that in, you can. Mine's not plugged in. Uh, the digital output you're never going to be able to use unless you buy some kind of crazy optical to analog converter and I've had very bad luck with those so I, w I don't recommend it but you can try your luck may vary um, you've got whatever sound cards on your computer that have an analog audio output that you can plug in your computer you plug them in label them for what they're used for if it's a music channel it's also a good idea to even include the channel numbers um, in your naming scheme. So what I actually recommend, um, I don't do this because I'm constantly changing my setup, but um, if this is plugged in, for instance, into channel 13, 14, which it is on mine, we'll do that. This one is plugged in to uh, 9 slash 10 uh, mini mixer 
matrix my, see mine's very confusing and if you really want to like make sure because i have two of these monitors um sometimes when the monitors they the graphics drivers get installed and it, the other one gets re-enabled or things get confusing or maybe it's this one um i have just very clearly put in the name use me so I know that's the one I want to enable when I'm trying to do certain things. Whatever you need to do to make your workflow work for you so that streaming is easy, do that. Um, you can even, if you buy those Ugreen sound cards, get a white piece of tape and a marker um, and, or whatever. Get, get some tape and a marker and label the sound card. Plug in the sound card, main Windows audio, write it on the thing, 11, 12, whatever channel you're using on a soundboard, label everything. This will make your life so much easier. If you ever think you're going to move your computer and unplug things or take your computer apart to clean it, and um, if you ever unplug a USB device and plug it back in to a different USB port, it will not be re registered as the same device. Anytime you change a USB port, for a device. So let's say you have one of these Ugreen sound cards or any USB sound card and you've plugged it into this first blue USB port here. And later down the road, you unplug everything because you want to clean your computer out, right? You want to take it outside and blow it, blow all the dust out and stuff. And you come back to plug things in and you notice, oh, my sound cards are all different or all wrong. Probably because you plug the sound card into a different USB port. If you use a different USB port, the device will be seen as a different device. This happens so that the computer can handle multiple versions of the device. You can plug in the same sound card four times um, and they'll be seen as different devices and can be used for different things. If, you're, if you have a Ugreen card on both of these and you swap them by mistake, they're going to be registered as whatever the port, the USB port was using it for before. So if you were, it's going to, it's going to switch everything around. It's going to get confusing. My suggestion is what you want to do is also think about each USB port as a number. You can go, um, I suggest going, um, from left to right, top to bottom. And you, you can figure out if, however, if your computer is usually not sideways, it's vertical. You can consider this to be top left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then label the USB device, USB eight. And then you can know, okay, I want to, if you have a system, you can plug the USB card right back into the exact same port. Otherwise you're going to have to go through this whole process again, every single time. If you accidentally plug into the wrong one, if you didn't do this, a quick hack to try and figure out is if it's labeled, Thankfully, if you labeled it and it says Discord on it, you can have this window, you can have this window open, right? And you can plug the device into a USB port. And if the name comes up and it says Discord and you've labeled it in Windows properly, you know you've plugged it into the correct USB port. If you plugged it into another one and it says a default has the default device name, you, you didn't plug it into the right port or if it has the wrong name, let's say it, it's you use two U green cards and one says Windows, one says Discord. You're going to need to make sure that the Discord one goes back into the port that was used for Discord. So if you plug it in, it says main Windows, you you know you've reversed it. So plug it into the other port and plug your main Windows one into that one. But it's much easier to have a system to label this stuff. So... Get ahead of the game here and label everything. Um, it'll make your workflow and everything that you do now will save you so much time in the future. It'll make your life way, way easier. But that's basically it. Whatever sound card, whatever device you want to plug in, you plug the cable in, you set the settings, and you go from there. You just remember, if it's an output device, you can set it to the highest quality in the advanced tab and 100% output volume. Never change the volume in Windows. Don't use your Windows media key to change the volume. Use the soundboard to change the volume. That's it. It's as simple as that. Plug a device in to a channel, label, label, label. Cables don't matter as much because they're kind of interchangeable. If it plugs in, it plugs in. You can use swap RCA cables. You don't have to label all this stuff. 
you just need to label the device itself and your soundboard and make sure everything is going to match up. Okay, so let's say you plugged everything in and now your main Windows output is not set as the default device. Uh, something else is the default device. And you want your main Windows sound to come from a different sound card that you've selected. So you're going to right click on it and you say set as default device. That'll give it this little checkbox. But then your communication device is wrong. So you're going to want to find your sound card for Discord. That's labeled Discord. And you can right click on that and say set as default communication device. This will let Discord, Skype, and other input devices, uh, other chat programs know that they need to use this microphone or, or this sound card as your chat voice. You want to do the same thing in the recording. You want to make sure your Discord one is both the default device and the default communication device. If you right click on it and it doesn't have the options to change, then it's good. It's got the little green checkbox, then it's good. Pretty straightforward. All right, so now let's move over to OBS okay. settings. You're gonna to wanna to click on your settings in OBS and get the settings window. Once you've got the settings window open, you're gonna to wanna to go to the audio tab first and you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's set to 48. By default, it is now set to 48 if you install OBS fresh, if you're a new streamer, but maybe you're old school and you've been streaming for a long time. This could still be on 44.1 from a long time ago. So set this to 48. I can't change it right now because I'm recording, but you could probably change it if you're just messing about with the settings and you're not streaming and recording and all of that. You're going to want to set the desktop audio to disabled. Desktop audio 2 should be disabled. And you're going to want one input in OBS. This is one of the greatest features of using a soundboard. <laughs> you're going to want one, you have one thing, one thing to mess about with in OBS now for your entire stream audio, for everything that's going in. You have one meter, one thing. So your mic can be set to the soundboard. That's it. Now mine's coming in through an analog input from my soundboard, but yours can be, yours is going to say, soundboard in because you labeled it and it's going to be say probably USB device, right? Um, it'll say USB next to it. So you want to have soundboard in as your mic aux. Everything else can be disabled. Monitoring device, we can talk about that in a different um, video, but basically you want this to be either be default or your USB device directly. I would leave it on default. Um, unless you're trying to send your alerts to a completely different sound card and you have a special sound card for alerts, set it here. If you want to send your alerts to a specific sound card, then change the monitoring device here. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the output tab and you're going to want the mode to be on advanced. Um, and you're going to want to look at the audio tab and you want to set each one of these audio bit rates to 320 on all the tracks. Just kind of future proof in case you use any of the tracks, set them all to 320. Twitch allows for 320 bit rate, which is great. You're going to get the highest quality audio you could possibly get by doing this. So audio bit rate 320. And then hit OK and close. So the last thing is you get to look at your mic aux meter. This is our soundboard. And you're going to right click on it and you're going to go to filters. And there's two filters you're going to want to set up. These two filters, a gain filter and a limiter filter. The gain filter is highly dependent upon your signal in OBS. Now my magnifier is making the frame rate look atrocious. Don't worry about that. And you can also see that my right channel is slightly louder than my left channel. And that's because we're on an analog board. And so I need to adjust the main mix sliders on my soundboard to get them to kind of even out a little bit. So you can use that as a visual indicator if your sound is kind of out of balance. My mic's a mono mic. You can also check the pan knob if, you, if it's actually leaning one way or the other in the pan knob, um, that can also cause it to look out of bounds. That looks pretty good right there. So the input volume 
without a gain filter is going to be incredibly low. We did that on purpose because we want a low noise floor. We don't want that hiss or that weird sound that comes through by boosting it in Windows. So I have the input volume set to 69. What you want to do is try to get your microphone's volume to be, when you're loud, kind of like in the middle of the red right there. Uh, top of red for your, you know, enunciative words, the transients on your vocals. <laughs> um, you want to be kind of very high yellow, bottom of red, generally speaking, when you're talking. Top of green for sure when you're talking kind of quietly. This is where you need to do a couple of things. If you sound good in your headphones and you've got your gain where I recommended earlier in the video, then you're probably in a good spot to now add this gain filter. Now I've had to use 9 dB of gain in order to get my voice in the proper space in the mixer here in OBS. That's basically all you're aiming for is getting your voice to sound right first. If your voice is loud and everything else you hear on the soundboard will be mixed in relationship to that anyway, so you'll be fine. Um, just use your ears and mix things so it sounds good and you can still clearly hear your voice over music and over game sound and all of that. So yeah, we're going to take the gain slider and you're going to want to be careful here. Don't do this while you're live because if you accidentally type 20 like that, it's too, it's too loud. Don't accidentally type too much, right? Um, you want nine decibels. Start with nine. See if uh, if nine nine sounds good. And you can have anywhere from three decibels of gain to make this good to twenty. You know, eighteen. I've had soundboards in the past that were really noisy over the USB, so I had to really bring them down to like 40 ish 50 on the windows side and then really boost the gain um through obs on the filter to like 18 decibels it is kind of dependent on your situation on your board so generally you're safe to boost as long as the input volume on the windows side is you know not too loud and then you want to add a limiter filter. Now, what this is going to do is distort and crush your voice down if things get too loud. This is kind of to protect your audience. I like to do around negative 3 dB um, if I'm recording. And for stream, you can go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 dB. It's all very safe. Um, I would recommend starting with at least negative 1 dB just to keep the ceiling down, but maybe not distort too much if you hit it. Um, this will make sure you don't blow anybody's ears out as well. It won't protect your ears because that's all coming from the soundboard, unfortunately. But this will protect your audience. So put a limiter here, at least negative 1 dB. Negative 3 is also okay too. Um, and as long as you're you know, not always living in the red when you talk, you're mostly... you know. As long as your voice only goes in the red once in a while, um, when you're loud or something loud happens on the stream, it's going to be pretty safe to use negative 3 dB. But negative 1 is fine for a soundboard. I, I think you could, I, I would recommend you guys just do negative 1 to be safe. Um, and if you really, really want to protect everybody and don't mind a little bit of distortion here and there when things get too loud, negative 3 is okay too. And that that's everything i know that was a lot i know this is a long video um the soundboard's complex there's a lot to go over i if you skipped parts of this video you skipped really important things i said a lot of important things in this video hopefully this helps you guys get hooked up and connected up to your computer i know i didn't really show you how to plug everything in if you need a video on how to plug a usb device in or how to how to read a sound card. You, you may not be ready for a soundboard yet. Um, it's everything is very, very labeled. Just look at the sound card. If it has, if it says out or in, it's an output or an input. And just remember those are in relationship to the device itself. Is it taking audio in or is it sending it out? I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Uh, I hope everybody, if you have questions, please leave them. Uh, you're, you're, if you're confused at all, let me know. Um, I'm going to be moving on from audio for a while. Maybe I'll revisit this if I can figure out 
more things I might want to, if I can figure out more things I want to share with you. Um, or maybe a new device comes out. Maybe I could do videos. I don't know if you have a suggestion for what kind of video you want, please leave it in the comments below and, um, I'll, I'll try to get to it. Um, I, if you are interested in joining our community, you can go to infinitequality.live and apply. If you're a Twitch affiliate or partner and you want to be a part of our community, we have a discord community for troubleshooting, talking, figuring things out. We have a member site with graphics. Um, people can make posts to help each other out. We talk about things in the discord. We have a Patreon. If you want to support this kind of content, if you find this helpful, if you want more future content like that, um, go to the website, click on the support page and support if you want to support. Other than that, um, I really appreciate you guys. If you like and you comment, that really helps the channel out. That really helps the algorithm. It helps people find the video. And if you're curious about what we're going to be doing next in the future on this channel, I'm going to be covering streamer.bot next. I'm going to be doing a whole series of videos on setting up and utilizing streamer.bot for all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so look forward to that. Get subscribed if you're not. Thanks, everybody. See you guys in the next one.